In this month's show, we follow the FIFA Club World Cup Qatar 2020. We meet the female referee who made history for FIFA. And we discover the glitz and glamour of an Arabian horse pageant in Doha. In 2019, Flamengo and Liverpool fans created a fantastic football atmosphere in the final match of the FIFA Club World Cup, played in Qatar. Last year, the competition had to be postponed until February 2021 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. An extensive COVID prevention protocol was then put in place by FIFA and the local organising committee to guarantee the safety of teams and fans. Despite the pandemic, the Egyptian side Al Ali managed to gather an impressive crowd of supporters or residents in Doha. Yet another motivation for the winners of the 2020 CAF Champions League. I have no words to describe my happiness at taking part in this competition. I have always dreamed of this moment since I was in the grassroots team. Every time we played the African Champions League, I focused on winning it to qualify for the FIFA Club World Cup. Thank God the dream has come true for me and all my teammates. Al Ali's captain and goalkeeper Mohamed El Shanawi was playing his first FIFA Club World Cup, now surrounded by health and safety measures. We are respecting the protocol rules and I can only thank the organisation for allowing the championship to go ahead, despite all the difficulties. We are aware that we're going through hard times, but they are taking care of everything, giving us everything we need so that we can fully focus on the match. And there was no lack of focus when Al Ali beat the Qatari side Al Dehail 1 0 in their quarter final match. Egyptian star Hussein El Shahat scored the only goal, which qualified the team for the semi final against Bayern Munich. In the other quarterfinal, Tigres, the CONCACAF champions from Mexico, would play Ulsan Hyundai from Korea Republic. A small community of Mexicans based in Doha were very excited to support Los Felinos in their first FIFA Club World Cup. I feel very lucky to be here representing so many Tigres fans who could not come to Qatar because of the pandemic. It's actually very moving to see my team in Doha so far away from home. I'm very proud for supporting my team on behalf of all Mexican fans. I just can't wait for the match. Three days before the match, the Mexican fans got together to collect their tickets, but not without a mandatory test for the COVID-19 coronavirus. The testing procedure took less than a minute with a simple cotton swab inserted into the nostril. Altogether, more than 20,000 tests were carried out on thousands of fans, players, officials and volunteers. I feel confident for the safety of my family. We can go to the stadium knowing that we have all tested negative for COVID, as well as the other fans. In the end, it's for our own safety and that of the players and officials as well. Once the test had been done, the fans waited no more than 15 minutes to receive the result via text message. If they tested negative, they were allowed to collect their tickets for the game. I'm very impressed with the protocol. It's all very fast and efficient. They deliver the test results very quickly. And you can have your ticket in less than 30 minutes. 
It's been really well organized, and I'm very happy with that. On match day at the Ahmed bin Ali Stadium, the Mexican fans would not be disappointed. Former French international André Pierre Gignac scored twice for Tigres as the Mexicans came from behind to beat Ulsan Hyundai. Final score 2 1. Tigres qualified for the semi final against Palmeiras from Brazil. No animal can better represent Arab culture than the Arabian horse. Strong, spirited and beautiful, the Arabian is the king of all horse breeds. Now, if you're looking for the most beautiful Arabian horses in the world, you need look no further than Qatar, the country where horse beauty pageants and national events broadcast live on TV. Every year, the city of Doha hosts an international Arabian horse festival. Over four days, nearly $4 million in prize money is awarded to the owners of the most beautiful animals. Nasser El Ghazali is a TV celebrity in the world of Qatari horse breeders. He presents horse shows and racing programs for the National Sport Channel. We have inherited this love for horses from our ancestors. There are many poems in Arabic mentioning the importance of horses in various fields, such as war, as well as the special relationship we have with them. We in Qatar are always trying to preserve this strong bond between human beings and horses. To make sure every horse is fairly judged, the festival invites foreign experts to evaluate the animals in competition. You can tell from a distance when it's an Arabian horse and not just any horse. You can tell by the long neck and its elegance. The mare should be very feminine looking, while the stallion looks a lot more masculine. You can see how it moves, how it behaves and the shape of its tail. It should always trot well, have a great neck and good chest angulation for optimal saddling. All that without forgetting the legs, of course. When you come to the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022, don't forget to book your place at a horse event. Alongside falconry and football, the horse will always have a special place in Qatari hearts. For me, horses are my life. They are my passion, my obsession. I wouldn't go as far as saying that horses are men's best friend, but they're definitely an essential part of the Arab life. February is a special month in Qatar. That's when all residents take advantage of the glorious winter weather to celebrate life through the practice of sport. And if the weather isn't enough motivation to make you run, swim or jump, Qatar has created the National Sports Day, a public holiday dedicated to promoting sporting activities for everyone. The Qatar National Sports Day is very special for me because in Qatar, sports are a way of life. 
It's a lifestyle. The state of Qatar has created this public holiday so that everyone can go out and practice sports. I can practice my favorite sport, which is gymnastics, and I also try to convince people to practice more sports. The National Sports Day celebrated on the second Tuesday of February was launched in 2012 and has been a success ever since. Even the Qatari royal family take part. His Highness the Emir Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani joins in with his children. I think that Qatar is a state that really encourages people to practice sports. They're building parks everywhere with hundreds of activities so that people can exercise outdoors. We can also see the stadiums they're building for the FIFA World Cup. So really this country offers us all the facilities you need to keep fit and healthy. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the 2021 edition of the National Sports Day was restricted to individual outdoor sports without the presence of crowds. That, however, didn't stop people embracing the event, if only for a walk on the West Bay Promenade. Sport has been a real safety valve for people who've been self-isolating. So sport has been incredibly important during the pandemic for society as a whole. Hopefully, once the pandemic is overcome, Qataris will fully enjoy the National Sports Day again next year. In the first semi-final of the FIFA Club World Cup, Tigres from Mexico would face Palmeiras, the Brazilian champions of the Copa Libertadores, led by the Portuguese coach Abel Ferreira. To be in Qatar, to play different football cultures, it's a great challenge for us. It's the consequence of our hard work, the achievement of our goals. Now we have the chance to measure ourselves against the best teams in the world. For Palmeiras midfielder Felipe Melo, it was a relief to be in Qatar after an exhausting Copa Libertadores campaign and a 15-hour long flight. The pitches are incredible here. The grass is really well taken care of. All this is very important. No wonder all the top European clubs come to Qatar. I thought it couldn't be better, but as we arrived here, we found the best stadiums and the best accommodation in the world. It's left us with the best impression we could have had. On top of world-class facilities, Palmeiras could count on the support of a very special fan. And the winner is... Silvia Greco. Two years ago, at the Best FIFA Football Awards, Silvia Greco from Brazil won the FIFA Fan Award for the Best Football Supporter. Silvia had been spotted by the Brazilian press as she commentated on Palmeiras matches for Nicolas, her 12-year-old blind son. I would like to thank FIFA for this award and for the opportunity to remind the world that disabled people need to be loved, respected and more than ever, included. I thank God for the chance to represent not only my son, but every disabled person in need of opportunity. Now FIFA invited Silvia and Nicolas to Qatar to support Palmeiras in their debut in the competition. It was really a big surprise. I was very excited, really over the moon. I had to ask my daughter to translate the message again because I just couldn't believe it. It was an invitation for me and Nicolas to come to the FIFA Club World Cup to see Palmeiras playing. Now I'm very confident that we're going to take this trophy home. Only three Brazilian clubs have won the FIFA Club World Cup title. Their compatriots' lack of previous success didn't daunt Silvia and Nicolas. 
Eu estou bem esperançosa. I'm very optimistic, very hopeful indeed. It's our turn now. There's a lot of expectation in the air. Our players are well prepared. They're eager to win the Club World Cup. As for me, I'm looking forward to commentating Palmeiras' goals to my son. That's going to be, for sure, my greatest award. The match against Tigres proved anything but easy, though. Ten minutes into the second half, Gignac opened the scoring for Tigres from the penalty spot. The 1-0 defeat to the Mexicans destroyed Silvia and Nicolas' dream, but not their faith in Palmeiras. That's what I tell Nicolas. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Football is like that, and football is like life. The most important thing is that you should always stand by the club of your heart. <laughs> History was in the making at the Ahmed bin Ali Stadium as the Qatari side Al Dehail beat Ulsan Hyundai 3-1 in the fifth place match of the FIFA Club World Cup. For the first time, an all-female referee team officiated a male professional football match in a FIFA tournament. Edina Alves Batista from Brazil took hold of the whistle, a dream come true in a life dedicated to football. Refereeing a football match brings you an adrenaline rush that is really exciting. Only a referee in the middle of a pitch can feel that. It's fascinating when you realize that. You feel totally gripped and you can't leave it anymore. By introducing female referees, FIFA has taken another important step on the path towards gender fairness and equality in the world of sports. FIFA president Gianni Infantino. It sends out an important message uh, to have a trio of, of, of women refereeing in the men's club world cup in an Arab country. It shows what football can do, what football can provoke, but it is also a message towards the future of what we can expect going forward because this is here to stay and to evolve. Did Adina have a message for girls all over the world who love football? I'd advise them never to give up their dream. No matter the obstacles, no matter how long it will take, they shouldn't give up. They should never be afraid of the path. They should only be afraid of not daring. Center stage of the FIFA World Cup are the players, the coaches, the officials, and of course the fans. But that's not all. The success of the greatest sporting event on earth relies heavily on an army of cheerful volunteers. In the FIFA Club World Cup Qatar 2020, more than 3,000 people applied to work as volunteers. Half of them were selected to join the blue team, helping the fans to have a safe and unforgettable football experience. It's been very rewarding. I offer my enthusiasm and I always get something back. I feel happy to see other people's happiness and my colleagues' satisfaction too. It's been such a great joy. I don't have the words to explain it. It's simply the joy of serving others. Alini, who's from Brazil, and Ayman, who's Egyptian, volunteered for the first time at the FIFA Club World Cup. 
I like to help people and love to be in the midst of a big event. It's an opportunity that not everyone can get. You can watch the event closely, you meet a lot of new people, and you can help them out. Above all, I feel that I have a purpose, playing a major role in a big event like the FIFA Club World Cup. The volunteers who come from all walks of life were drawn from 74 nationalities for the FIFA Club World Cup. Before the tournament kicked off, they received 20 hours training in different areas like hospitality, transport and spectator services. During this pandemic though, the volunteers' responsibilities had to go much further. The safety of everyone was a top priority. We must inform the fans, reminding them to keep social distancing, to wear the mask in the correct way, always covering the nose and mouth. We also explain to them that it's important not to touch their eyes or mouth. That's what we do. We keep them well informed about all the necessary precautions. Next date in the volunteers' diary, the FIFA Arab Cup to be held in Qatar in December 2021. Another stepping stone to the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022, when 20,000 volunteers will be recruited to help millions of fans coming from all over the world. If you want to join this winning team, please visit volunteer.fifa.com. Nine years after their last semi-final match in the FIFA Club World Cup, Al Ali didn't seem intimidated by Bayern Munich's recent winning streak. The challenge is very big, but Al Ahli are used to playing against the biggest teams because we are also one of the biggest teams in the world. We are well known around the world. For Bayern, the match will be like a training practice, but training is not a match. I hope we will surprise them in the game, because in the end, nothing is impossible for Al-Ahli. Despite Al Shahat's confidence, the Egyptians couldn't stop Bayern's efficient goal machine. Scoring a double, Robert Lewandowski booked a place for the Bavarians in the final match. In 2020, Bayern Munich bagged every single trophy a German football team can dream of. Now Bayern were looking for the icing on the cake, a second world title for the only German club ever to have played in the FIFA Club World Cup. In general, it's always something special to play in this competition. And we at Bayern Munich, we want to win every single match. The conditions here couldn't be better. The pitch conditions are great and the stadium's beautiful. You can see that things are already looking good for the FIFA World Cup in 2022. As for us, as I said, we want to leave Qatar after succeeding at the highest level here. Beyond a regular domestic competition, the FIFA Club World Cup offers coach and players the opportunity to face teams from all over the world. For us, it is very interesting to play against clubs from other continents. The FIFA Club World Cup is a very, very big title. The qualification for this competition is, I believe, the most difficult one, because to be here, you have to win the Champions League. And this makes it very special, because you don't just win the Champions League every year. Now, if you win it, you play here. And that's why it's so important to conquer this title as well. The final day. Bayern dominated the game, but couldn't take the lead until the second half, when Benjamin Pavard eventually scored the match's only goal. A second FIFA Club World Cup title for Bayern, and a triumph for FIFA and the host country who organised the tournament, ensuring everyone's safety. 
basketball is back to life really at global level and, uh, and we can see really some light at the end of the tunnel. So it's a, it's a great satisfaction even if you know, we have to be aware of the current situation, we have to be aware that health is the top priority and has to remain the top priority, but um, it's good to see uh, the ball rolling again in a World Cup. Next month, we'll discover one of Doha's greatest football rivalries in the Qatar Cup final. We'll visit the spectacular Museum of Islamic Art. And we'll keep on exploring the beauties and secrets of Qatari culture.